It's October the 17, 2015. I'm Dana Dernford, also known as the Nuclear Proctologist. Org, and you can find my videos and Fukushima presentations at Beautiful Girl by Dana on YouTube, where we're streaming live right now. And today is about the jet streams. Uh, the jet streams has been a huge uh, controversy around that. People claim that it's not real. And because I'm talking about jet stream today, I've already got five thumbs down on the video before the video starts. And so that's looking good. We are streaming live, kind of. Looks like I just stopped. And so the jet streams, the models you're seeing behind me are the models from foreign governments, Canadian governments, American governments. And I can play a video of these models for everybody that I put together. You guys said Dorn there at the beginning of it. He was inside a uniform. Only man on the planet. And so... These models that you're looking at, these are models just based up on a single release from a single reactor for just a couple of days. And most of these models are based up on a couple of weeks um, dispersal. And so you're not looking at a model of uh, four and a half years, not looking at a model of all four reactors, you're not looking at a model of the spent fuel pools, you're not even looking at a real model, you're looking at a model that only includes two elements of the, the thousands that came out of there. And so are the jet streams real is the only question we really need to answer. The ocean takes a lot longer to get here, 45 days. The jet streams only takes a couple of days. The ocean currents travel, and we'll cover that on the next episode of the ocean. But you have to talk about it in context sometimes. And we never made a stream yesterday. Uh, just end endless problems for me. And it's, it's uh, you know, 365 days on the ocean. On the uh, 260 days on the ocean on the expedition for life, just play that one little clip for anybody that's not familiar. We, we went up, searched the coastline, 15,000 miles of coastline, uh, in a crowd-funded operation that lasted 260 days, up to five months on the ocean. <laughs> And so those five expeditions are now over, and we are producing a documentary and a book about Fukushima to inform this planet, and we intend to have a conversation about this. I got clips about salt water and the buckyballs that they originally sprayed on it from MIT, Harvard, and from the NRC, from Senate hearings that I'm going to be playing tonight. And some of these dispersal models like you're looking at behind me, doesn't give you a lot of context, but it does show you that the radionucleoids, um, and let me explain that to everybody, about the transport of the radionucleoids to North America. Uh, 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 I got so much, it's ridiculous how much stuff we got, so we better keep moving. And so jet streams, are the jet streams real? That's what we have to prove originally in this episode, the fourth episode of the Fukushima meltdown news. Springer, this is Springer, uh, Trans-Pacific Air Pollution. So the studies done on the Trans-Pacific, how pollution makes its way across. China exports pollution to the U.S. And so the automobiles, the haze you see in the cities from the factories all come over to North America, to Canada, United States. This is well known. Filthy emissions from Japan are carried across the Pacific Ocean and contribute to the air pollution in the Western United States. Now I know people like Ken Buesler of Woods Hole Oceanographic Institution and Jay Cullen from University of Victoria says that the jet streams are not real and I believed them. Then one day I was watching the Weather Channel and they were showing these jet streams. I phoned them up and asked them. And they said, well, I'm sorry, sir, but the jet streams are real. And then they hung up on me. I called them back, and then they said, hey, this is that cranky guy who says the jet streams are not real. And so I'm really confused, and I went looking. Turns out the jet streams are real. So Jay Cullen and Ken Buser lied to us, and so did all your media. They'll tell you about the jet streams when the weather, for rain, but they won't tell about for radionuclides for some reason. So the importance of injection height of biomass burning emissions 
in the boreal forest regions. Now, you got to think about the idea of this one here is to, to explain to you how high up the forest fires soot, soot, soot. So if you took a little piece of that soot that goes up in these studies and comes across from wherever, these are a million times bigger than the atoms from Fukushima we're talking about. So if the big forest fires can make it, uh, you know, thousands of miles, hundreds of thousands of miles before they finally get rained out and washed back down the earth, how hard is it for something a million times smaller in large quantities to make its way over here is a question you should be asking yourself. Transboundary pollution influences on aerosol concentrations in the United States. So once again, there's a lot of studies showing that what happens over there comes directly over here and adds us to your UV, adds to your uh, pollution indexes rather. We find the Trans-Pacific transport of Asian pollution accounts for 30%, 30% of the background sulfate. Now the sulfate that they're talking about is tens of thousands of times bigger than the radionuclides from Japan. Melted reactors, 100% meltdown. So all I'm trying to do is say, you know, there's, there, the jet streams might be real. They, they really actually truly might be real. I know Ken Busler, Jay Cullen are the, the, the biggest things on the planet and they get up on every median on the planet and they say it's not real. They say all you gotta worry about is a little bit of the ocean and that they don't they don't test test the, and we'll talk about the ocean later, but in the next episode actually. And so I don't want to confuse you too much because we want to save a lot of stuff for that. But these these people are responsible for informing everybody and every single person in North America, and they get every media on the planet to propagate out their line without another narrative in that. There's no debate. You can only have Jay Collin and Ken Jusler, and they'll both tell you the exact same stories and they won't even admit to a melted reactor in Japan. And that's these two guys right here. I might as well play a clip of that scene as I'm talking about it. So here's a clip of Jay Collin. First off, he starts off by telling you there's a thousand times more natural radiation. Nobody knows why he does this outside of, he could be a nuclear PR firm would make a lot of sense, right? So let's play that clip. But then he's gonna say, if there was a meltdown and the only one they have in comparison is Chernobyl. But if there was a meltdown in Japan, right on the ocean, that would be a different story. This is 2000, at the end of 2013, almost 2014. He's up on CBC radio telling everybody. But let me play that so real quick. The levels of radioactivity that are actually being measured um, are a factor of a, of a thousand below the concentrations and the activity uh, of those naturally uh, occurring radioactive elements. And have there been any other nuclear uh, meltdowns nearer the ocean that might provide some useful information on how radioactive materials, uh, you know, travel or what have you in, in, in oceans? Well, I, I'm not aware of any meltdowns uh, uh, right next to oceans. Uh, we, um, the only sort of point of comparison that we have is, is uh, Chernobyl in 1986. Um, if something similar were to happen uh, on the coast of Japan, it would be a very serious um, situation to find ourselves in. And the, the levels of radioactivity that are actually... So that, you know, that doesn't make any sense. Why is the spokesperson about Fukushima saying there's no melted reactors? And then we call him out, now he admits there's melted reactors. But he, he would have kept doing that line if we didn't call him out, if we didn't exist, if we didn't get uh, back in his face and, and accuse him of being disingenuous. All right, liar. Right, so he would still be spewing that nonsense. Meanwhile, Japan is still spewing this deadly material. It's just, this is an, an epic, epic uh, event we have going out on our planet. Uh, now, in comparison, Chernobyl, you can look up this one in The Guardian from 2006, and it came out at 133. 20, that's just a joke, by the way. So look at the third, uh, read that, and look at the third sentence. For the next 10 days, spewed the equivalent of 400 Hiroshima bombs worth of radioactivity across 150,000 square miles of Europe and beyond. Wait a second. It only lasted 10 days, but it was equal to 400 Hiroshima bombs, and it contaminated 150,000 square miles. You still can't sell the land in lots of UK, which is far away from Chernobyl and Ukraine and Ireland and Scotland. You can't sell the land because it's contaminated 28 years ago. You can't put it on the market. 
But I can't make it over to Canada, the United States, from Japan. <laughs> but you still can't sell the land in the UK and Scotland and Ireland and Ukraine. You can't drink the milk or eat the meat there either. But 400 Hiroshima bombs. Now Chernobyl is one-third the size. Chernobyl was a 30% meltdown, and Chernobyl stopped after 10 days. They don't got no pictures for us here. So, okay, so the jet streams, I know this is coming as a shock to people, but they're actually real. Yeah, your media told you it wasn't real. I get that part of it. So let's go in and listen to Matthew Walt before he got promoted uh, to the atomic energy PR firms. But he does put out little bits of information. He was up at Harvard. No, this was Stanford or MIT. Hang on. Yeah, this was Stanford. I forgot I had that clip in there. Let's play that clip. And so things will get a little bit noisy coming up here because we're flip, switching, switching back and forth to clips. I have to grab the headphones. They're connected to the microphone. You hear a little jittering. This is so important. And, you know, I, I'm on a little tiny budget doing everything I'm doing. That's going to get better in the future as we start to raise money for new equipment. But right now, this is what we got. And, you know, here's the clip. Uh, once you start putting in salt water, because that's all you have handy, you have an additional problem, which is you're not removing heat from the salt water. You're actually boiling away the water to keep it cool. It's called feed and bleed. It's like you had a pot of boiling eggs on the stove, and for some reason you couldn't turn the stove off, so you kept putting in more water. All of that heat is going up as steam. You're concentrating the salt. Well, the salt is going to start to, to uh, mess things up. The salt is going to start to block things up. Now, we have an additional problem here, which is they managed to overpressurize the whole system in the first few hours. You see the things labeled jet pump on either side. There are recirculation pumps that are actually located a little lower down towards the bottom than this schematic indicates. And they blew the seals on those, which means you've got reactor water leaking out, out of the vessel uh, into the primary containment, and possibly you've got bits of fuel that have been atomized or, or broken up into suspension uh, so we're starting to spread our uh, fission products, all the things that the uranium was broken up into, the highly radioactive stuff, the cesium, the strontium, the iodine, etc. Uh, we're starting to spread that over the, the whole plant. Uh, go on to the next slide, please. Uh, starting to spread it over the whole plant. He can't help himself. He's just a malicious lawyer. But because he's at Stanford, and this is a couple of days after the Fukushima event, they're, they have to tell some truths and they can't avoid that because they're being asked these questions in the audiences. And so he he says how the uranium is broken up into strontium and cesium and iodines and all the other products. Do you get it now? Because 97% of the reactors are uranium. So everything we're talking about is a byproduct of uranium, but it's propagated out as being... Um, you know, something that's harmless or insignificant or benign or innocuous or whatever. Okay, so we got another clip. We got four or five of these little clips. We're going to play another one. We're going to go over run through headlines and then we're going to come back and forward, back and forth and scoot through this next hour. We got 45 minutes left. We're moving pretty good here, so let's keep going. will go in the order that they will, will talk. Um, uh, Mujid Kazemi, who's uh, second from the left there, is director of the Center for Advanced Nuclear Energy Systems in the department. Uh, he is also the TEPCO professor of nuclear science and engineering. Uh, to his left... TEPCO professor. That's what he got there at uh, MIT. I just wanted to make that really clear for everybody. Okay, so... Let's run over and just talk about the jet stream and the proof that the jet stream is real and how we can prove that. Um, and so just Calgary Sun, no need to panic, probably about Fukushima fallout, about Fukushima fallout, January 22nd, that rained on Canada, that rained on our country. Do you need any more proof? Government hasn't even released the data. No need to panic, probably. But actually there is, see? 
So Canada held called 300 times background level of iodine 131 minute and would refuse to say anything else. There's your proof. Just dreams are real. August 11, 2011, and the Georgia Strait uh, wants radiation tests done in Canada. And the Canadian government says, oh, well, it's, it's only 300 times background level of iodine 131. 300 times background levels? There's no such thing as a background levels of iodine 131 because they've got an eight day half life. Yeah? But there's iodine 132, they didn't bother mention 10 times more, but that's only got a four day half life. But last 10 times that, right? So it's 50 days. No problem to make it here in three days to jet streams, yeah? But it, it's got a short half life. But then there's iodine 129, there's 31 times more. For every single, for 300 times background of iodine 131, there's 31 times more. 129 iodines with a 15 million year half life times 10, 150 million year life. So they tell you about iodine 131 because it's uh, only last eight days times 10. <laughs> Just terrible people. Canada busted covering up spikes in Fukushima radiation. Canada busted, busted. And spikes. And so we, Canada flew along the coastline. And I don't think I got that whole study in that particular one, but I do got it right somewhere. Oh, it was there. Let me bring that back up. <laughs> okay, let's keep going. I got another folder. I'll probably go through it again. So Vancouver, Canada, radiation test showed iodine 131 in rainwater at 100 times above U.S. drinking water limits. That's a, so it takes 5, 10, 15, 20, 25 years typically for cancers to show up. But 1,800 autoimmune deficiencies can show up immediately within a short period of time as you ingest all these particles, continuously ingesting the particles. So like they like to play these games which... Uh, I think I came up with a better way to explain it to people. I was sitting here just before the show and it kind of struck me, Dina. So, tritium at 7,000 becquels a liter. If you drink a liter every day, this is man-made. Artificial radionuclides in the, in the Canadian drinking water standards, they now added all these radionuclides. So, cesium at 10 becquels a liter so you, every time you drink a liter, now next liter you got 20 becquels in you. Next liter you got 30 becquels. Next liter you got 40 becquels. You get a shower, you got three more liters in you. That's 110 becquels. So there's 3,500 becquels a year, say. And so next year you have 6,500 becquels, and the year after, <laughs> and you'll have to, even after you're, you're dead and someone goes and Geiger counts your body in 100 years, uh, the, those counts will still be there, whatever you accumulated in your lifetime. But tritium, you're getting 2.5 million becquels a year just if you drink a liter of water a day all of a sudden. But that accumulates for 120 years. The uranium you see in the natural radionuclides, the lead and, and the, the, the stuff over here that's natural is nothing compared to man-made. And that don't accumulate in your body. Your body treats that as homeostasis and it expels any excess. You can't have any more in you. But the artificial radionuclides are piling up in everything in you all day long. And if you're a child, you're still piling up, but you have less body mass. It's real bad stuff. So if you're small animals or invertebrates on the coastline, uh, and we'll cover that at the end of the show, you're in a lot of trouble. So every day, you get that in your body, that's there forever. That's extras. And each day that adds up. and But that's not all you're going to get each day. Don't take for a second. That's, that's the, the actual numbers. Because when it comes to Stronti 90, there was 100 times more than cesium. So for, if there's 10 cesium, it should be 1,000 strontium 90. Not half as much. And we don't measure it in becquels or liters. We measure it in cubic meters. There's 1,000 liters in the cubic meter. But they're doing that because... They are in a lot of trouble. Let's check out the NRC uh, machine about salt water. And I can't remember. I think this is a one minute video. Uh, but uh, it, this is just four days after. I think this was actually on the 15th. Yeah, four days after the accident. 
and they're doing their first. And uh, don't quote me until we play the clip, on you. But. You've heard about the uh, the diesel-driven fire pumps that they're using to take seawater and put in the Fukushima uh, mm -hmm. uh, primary containment. We already have mobile diesel-driven mobile pumps on every site in the country that can be moved around the site to provide another contingency measure should we lose a cooling source. Mm -hmm. And there's countless other measures like that. It's really many contingencies that, that we did that. So they got these pumps, they can move them anywhere around the site and get salt water and spray on the melted reactors and create these sulfur peroxide hydrogen buckyballs is what he's telling you. That's just banana stuff, okay? Let's keep going. The NRC reviewed okay, it. But you were You've heard about the, uh, the diesel-driven fire pumps that they're using to take. Right, that was the point I wanted to make, was that here they are like comparing Fukushima to their plants, but not talking about the radioactive fallout, not talking about the dispersal, not talking about the event, not talking about the crisis in any context. And they lied that whole video. A couple of days later, they had to do it again, and they were more for it, right? Well, we played those clips before, but not today. So here's Harvard Public School. <laughs> There's not any public of a public health, sorry, as a private school. And only the, the very evilest children go there. Harvard is the very, uh, the very uh, ground zero of evil. What would you do if you were in charge of what, what must happen? And what do you mean by stabilization? Um, <clears throat> let me ask the answer the stabilization question first. That's um, keeping the cores and the spent fuel pools filled with water and keeping that water cooled. Uh, for the for the months and years during which cleanup uh, will require, uh, and in a stable situation, you will not be relying upon skid-mounted diesel pumps and fire hoses drawing from the ocean. That that's can be at most a very short-term solution. It's very problematic, as I described earlier. Um, so that's the stabilization challenge. Uh, the on-site emergency response challenge uh, is to take um, actions um, that involve very high worker exposure. And often they're ad hoc. They're jury-rigged uh, solutions made up on the spot. Um, they Clearly, if you have fire trucks and skid-mounted diesel pumps and, and hoses, um, you're in an operating environment that was never contemplated. There was never any rehearsal for it. Um, I do not know the um, practice or, or the regulatory practice in Japan. In the United States, um, there is a provision for worker exposure up to 25 rem in emergency and 75 rem to conduct life-saving activity in an emergency. And that's, it's quite a substantial dose, a 75 rem dose. It's not yet in the fatal range, but uh, you could expect morbidity in life shortening. Um, but that is a provision in U.S. regulations, um, and uh, typically volunteers would be requested for that um, function. Thank you. Firefighters don't run in the burning houses that are completely consumed and everything is falling in on top of them, right? That's what Japan is. It's a little tricky when I was saying that one. Everybody's like, yeah, Dana, firefighters run in the burning houses. You conspiracy theorists joke. <laughs> so jet streams, evidence of sharp features in the Fukushima plume over southwestern. Evidence of sharp features in the Fukushima plume. In the plume. In that plume. So why bother testing the ocean when you know it's going to all, it already landed throughout the whole country and it all washes back down to your shoreline? It's the distraction. Don't mention this. Don't bring this up. Keep this hit away. Don't. That's Hell Canada. It was hit away for a couple of years. Several studies on the radioactive releases from Fukushima nuclear power plant already exist. March the 18th. The Fukushima plume provided nice opportunities to test radioactivity detection capabilities. Oh, my goodness. Zero morals. Nice opportunity. Oh, it was awesome, honey. We brought some sandwiches and some aspartame pop and some. This study focuses on the rival little plume over southwestern BC. <laughs> no, no, Dana didn't come over here. 
But, but there it is. No, Dana, you're bloody conspiracy theorists. But the jet streams are real. No, they're not, Dana. Aerial survey, March the 20th. So he took samples every 15 minutes here in Canada. <laughs> look at it, look at the spike. Yoink. Health Canada Radiation Monitoring Network every 50 minutes. They shut all of these off. Let me keep going anyway. I'll show you some of those headlines in a second. March to, uh, 12th to the 18th. March 19th, March the 20th, March the 20th, March the 20th. So at midnight, they were, they were flying. At 6 a.m., they were flying. Here's the big plume. Should we tell the kids not to go out, go to school today? No, you don't want to tell them that. Then they might... Start looking at things. No, kill them all. Let, uh, let them die of like, all kinds of cancers in 5, 10, 15, 20 years. We don't care. We're getting money. I mean, yeah, But they paid us to get up in this plane. They paid for the plane. Shouldn't we tell them? No, you can't tell them. We won't have no pensions. But that's why we got the job was to go up and tell them and find it. Yeah, but we're not going to tell them because we'll lose our pensions. Yeah, but that's your friends and your loved ones. I don't care about them. I couldn't get a job serving french fries anywhere. This is the conversation that they had in that plane when they were doing this. Because nothing else makes any sense. 76 trillion beckles of plutonium. 76 trillion atoms. 76 trillion vicious cancers. Now, if you don't think plutonium is a cancer, you got something else coming to you. Dr. Raymond Gill Mitty from Loveless. That's a good name for what he was doing, Loveless. <laughs> and so what he done was peer review academic studies he done 94 that we know about he, they're still killing beagle dogs and beagle puppies and um, they know a thing or two about plutonium trust me what they discovered a little unnerving Dina you can find the clip I click and stuff that shouldn't have been there that time till later for other stuff so here's one of these studies. Tumors of the lung, skeleton, liver occurred beginning at about three years. I know three. Sue me. Three years. I'm from the East Coast. I'm allowed to say those words. Bone tumors found in 93 dogs were the most common cause. So strontium goes right into the bone like um, calcium. There's 100 times more strontium than there is cesium. See, cesium goes into the muscles, it sequesters into the organs, and, and, and loves the heart, and loves to kill you that way. But the plutonium sequesters into the bones. And it goes right to your pelvis and creates these uh, mutated stem cells. And that's why they had 93 dogs were the most common bone tumors. Lung tumors found in 46 dogs because they were breeding them in. You get your bucky balls today. I'll cover that in a little tiny bit too. Uh, and put this into perspective. They were giving the dogs little tiny particles atoms there's 20 million in the particles in a radioactive iodine per liter but there was uh, 31 times more iodine 129 with a 15 million year half-life per liter does rain fall but a liter do you think that that stuff is all cesium like mit was telling you earlier all the byproducts are created out of the uranium it's not just iodine this is easy in the strontium amaurice well the amaurice from plutonium but there's 2,000 that we know about and 10,000 that are classified uh, but they only tell you about this iodine because it's got an eight. Oh, it's only got an eight-day half-life. And then eventually you go try to figure out what the hell is a half-life, and you find out there's ten of them, and they're all eight days each. So that's eighty days. But you have to go look that up yourself. It's very rare they're going to tell you that. They're not going to tell you that in CBC or BBC or ABC or NBC or anything like that. But twenty thousand particles of radioactive iodine, that is catastrophic, because it's covering everything. Twenty twenty million rather. But then there was uh, 31 uh, times more, 129. Just do the numbers on 20 million thir times 31. And then do the numbers times 2,000 <laughs> radioactive isotopes and put some of that into a model for a change. You probably will never walk out your door again. And so that's why this study here, and Kate at the Fukushima Hands, you'll find a link below, um, all my videos, in case I forget this one, I think it's already there. But this is a million becquels per, per square meter. This is what this is showing. And because you had 20 million becquels in a liter of rain. And because it never stopped coming out of there. And because the jet streams, I know, Dana, I sound pretty kooky when I say the jet streams are real. But I actually got a lot of supporting documentation to show that. 
Well, we don't care about that dinner. Jay Collin and Ken Busley said there's no such things. Shut up. You little kaida. 10,000 al kaida. You got millions dead, millions missing, millions in refugee camps, entire countries destroyed. You got 280,000 rapes in the last 10 years. You got 80,000 suicides in the military in the last 10 years. You get al Qaeda. I dime 129. See, and then a conspiracy theorist, a grown radiological risk, 15.7 million year half life, in your face, almost undetectable, but not undetectable. If you go, like you go get a proper Geiger counter, and, and there's a lot of money, but you can find it because it's not going to go away. So there's no rush. You'll find it when you get around to it. It's there. <laughs> it ain't going nowhere. <laughs> oh, that's the ocean. Let's keep going. Well, actually, that's the atmosphere, too. Right? You can see the plume coming up into the air. But then it falls directly down to the ocean like a, like a uh, uh, Niagara Falls. <laughs> now post in Fukushima. ATMC. Conspiracy theorists saying there's jet streams. Huh? Someone needs to buy them a whole bunch of, of uh, post-it notes. <laughs> Latest shows particles traveling across Pacific. That's bullshit. Jay Collin and Ken Fusler told me there's no such thing as a jet stream. You hooey. If somebody else tells me the jet stream is real, I'm going to snap. Wait a second. That's Springer. That's an academic journal. They're saying the jet streams are real. Pfft, that's probably not real. Someone probably photoshopped that and put that up there at Springer. China exports their pollution to the U.S. Suck it up, slaves. Let's keep going. I got, <laughs> I got a tendency to be a hard case sometimes. So spraying all that salt water on the reactor like they were telling you at Stanford, MIT, and Harvard, and Yale. Nuclear chain reaction may have lasted over seven months. <laughs> Dana, you gotta tell everybody shit five times anyway before they usually get it. Hell on earth. So, and so reactor four Chernobyl nuclear power complex exploded, caught fire, blew up, and for the next 10 days spewed the equivalent of 400 Hiroshima bombs. 400. But it stopped after 10 days. I know this is gonna come as a shock to you. But Fukushima didn't stop for seven months for sure. And I'm hoping the jet springs are not real at this point of the video, to tell you the truth, because I'm starting to get a little bit. <laughs> so when you spray the salt water on the reactors, the sulfur from the salt water creates a ball. It's like a little soccer ball. I can probably find you a patcher if I tried. Not that I'm notorious for trying or anything. Let me see. So the buckyball would look something like that, yeah? And inside of it would be this particle, yeah? Get that meteorite editor. But we should treat it as a meteorite. We should treat it as something coming at us and that the whole planet rallies to solve that riddle. And we got 4,340 peer review academic studies published every day, three a minute, there's 1,440 minutes in a day. And that these are all locked up behind the paywalls of Elsefer and Springer and Wiley. And that if we were to flip that energy and, and 4,000 peer review studies on our drinking water, 4,000 uh, tomorrow, another 4,000 peer review studies on our food. And, and the next day you, gotta, you start another 4,000 long-term studies on moving people off the coastline like they did in the Techa River where they evacuated 7,500 communities permanently for a lot less radiation than what we can prove definitively 100% Without any kind of reservations, we can prove it. Chernobyl is nothing. You should send everybody from Japan to Chernobyl. They'd be much better off. They're dead people walking as we talk anyway. And so you might extend their life by sending them. Don't send them over here. There's a lot of radiation. The jet streams come straight over here. I know, Dana, you're kooky saying the jet streams exist. But at some point in the very, 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 very close in the next few months, this story is going to break, and it's going to be the, the dominant. And they're going to be out talking about, they're going to be out screaming, oh, 
Dana, it's like a banana. I don't know why you're so upset. It's like a potato chip and walking in sunshine. And it's like the rocks, Dana. It's like getting on an airplane. It's like the water that you drink, Dana. The sun creates it, Dana. There's nothing wrong with it. There's lots of more radiation from the sun, Dana. But all of that is the misdirection. All that is a misrepresentation. All that is an outrageous, outright fabrication meant to deceive you, manipulate you, and turn you against me. I'm not the bad guy for gathering off tens of thousands of documentations for crowdfunding an operation to go out and look at the entire coastline of Canada, 15,000 miles. Like, I'm still rusty with this, even my own home. I've only been back a short period. We've been on the ocean at a 365 days, 260 of them. We haven't stopped. And we got that data. We don't need to do that no more. It wouldn't hurt to do follows up. We show the birds are missing throughout the whole coastline. That's backed up in headlines. Everything we said was true since we started this is now manifested in headlines. They've, we forced him to admit. We, like we forced Jay Cullen to admit. Here's Gunnarsson. Radioactive sulfur in California showing there was an ongoing, ongoing criticality recurring chain reaction. 400 billion neutrons a square come from. Well, the reactors blew up. And so all that sulfur they sprayed in those reactors for the first 40 days, every minute, you're releasing incredible amounts of radioactivity because of the sulfur in the, in the salt water. It's the stupidest thing you could ever imagine, but that was all they were left with. They were probably better off doing nothing. Unprecedented phenomenon from using salt water in Fukushima reactors, forming new uranium compounds able to travel long distances, right? And that's why we're talking about these buckyballs, like the carbon buckyballs. Let me come back and show you another picture. So it, it could look something like that. Hang on. And so it looks like this in one context. So inside of that, it would ingest the 2,000 atoms, different types of atoms, and, and become like a little nuclear engine. And they're easily transportable and they're not solutable, and they're, but they are transportable on water. And then they are liberated through rain and through hitting the coastlines. In the same way salt and oxygen is liberated on your coastline. And so that number you're looking at, or that picture you're just looking at, that's your drinking water. That's your drinking water. I got so much on my computer, it's just boom. But I'm getting back up to speed. You see, I need a TriCaster, but they're 12,000 bucks to do this properly so I can bring in lots of people for conversations. And so I'm so good at it now. Anyway, it's going to take me like a month to get used to the new TriCaster when I finally get that. And I will get that. Trust me, I'm going to get that at some point. I'll put my back to the wall and start raising that money. You can donate at the nuclearproctologist.org. You'll find a donate button in the contact area. Or you can donate through PayPal, Dana Durnford at Hotmail.com. And we desperately need to raise money the whole way through. So the dispersals from these meltdowns, like you see number four over there, is right to the ground. That's the one they said that the fuel pool, they got it all edited, but they can never get in. They can't get in Chernobyl. Behind me is a night shot of dispersals coming out of there. It looks like steam, but that's radiation. And in just a one-minute steam release, there's enough atoms there to kill everybody on this planet if you were to distribute those atoms at one at a time. And let me get back to the headlines because i got a tendency to digress if I don't stick to my... So this is the official peer review study that I'm showing you, a lot of the stuff here, about the buckyballs and that phenomenon. These are the different shapes that the sulfur can take. And the... The atoms are electrically charged, will attach themselves to it, and in the bigger ones up here, like these guys, can ingest the particle. And I might have to get off this. This is a Banksy, is it? Not a melted reactor. There you go, Banksy. So these reactors blew up. They ejected their... And so, like forest fires, the reason those big particles can travel big distances is because they're created at such a hot temperature. So what you're looking at here, I'm trying to show to you, is those hot temperatures were created. And these detonations were felt 25 miles away. So this is a real deal. And 
So the buckyballs, let's get through a few more of that. Expert nuclear chain reaction. Okay, we just covered that one. Hydrogen, sulfur, peroxide, buckyballs. Spears, radioactive material from Fukushima reported for the first time. October 21st, 4, 2013. But I got, that just happened to be that headline, right? But we, we knew about this before that. From Fukushima, ball-like particles composed of cesium, iron, zinc, solid and insolubable in water. Impact on the health, human health needs to be examined. <coughs> These are hot particles. These are hot. That's a death sentence. You get one of them in you. And people in California were breathing in 1,500. Uh, Neil deGrasse Tyson talks about the hydrogen, sulfur, and buckyballs during Joe Rogan. So it was starting to spread out there. Peroxide formed by seawater melted fuel even more likely to react with elements in the core. And so they accept those elements from the core, the neutrons, the bombardment, the electrons, to the, the elements that we naturally created are now mutated and extremely dangerous to everything on the planet. That's why we have terrorist laws, and that's why we have nuclear holding sites, and that's why we have, you know, uh, nuclear scientists were put on a pedestal because they deal with such dangerous stuff. Turns out that these were the worst people we could find on the planet. Is a nuclear scientist. These are the worst things we have ever created. These are the traitors. They have betrayed us every step of the way and have uh, minimalized and misrepresented every aspect of the technology and so that most people think it's like a banana or potato chip or walking in the sunshine because why would a nuclear scientist lie, Dana? Because you can't get a job if he doesn't. That's just the way that industry is. That industry cannot exist. The nuclear industry can't exist without lying about every aspect of it. Well, there's no releases in your community, but the fuel pool boils off 120,000 liters a day, each one of those fuel pools that are holding the old cores from the reactors. It's, so it's just endless lies. I can go on and on, but that's not what I'm trying to do here today. Unprecedented phenomenon. We already covered that. Just make sure. Yeah. Okay. We're doing pretty good, actually. Buckyballs from Japan. And so that was the Stanford video that you watched earlier. So the Prime Minister ordered a halt to the cooling after he was voiced seawater can cause a chain reaction or recriticality. And so they sprayed salt water went into all the reactors on the entire coastline. And for perspective, let me play you in the background a video of the tsunami rushing through the country. I fixed the audio. We had trouble. On the last one. So the audio was playing a little tiny bit in the background. And I'm just going to play half of this video today. It's two, three minutes long. And so this hit the entire coastline at 600 miles an hour. This is the first wave. Then there's another wave came in on top of that, and another wave came in on top of that. And then you had 500 miles of coastline underwater. You had 500 miles of coastline being shredded like a, a, a wood chipper. You had 500 miles of coastline where there was no infrastructure left. You have 500 miles of coastline where everything is completely uh, rendered useless. And, and we have a debris field in the uh, Pacific Ocean that's 2,000 miles by 2,000 miles. The was filming from the third floor needed to evacuate to the fourth floor after the water started rising. So the water rose very heavy. Uh, very, very high, rather. Now, all the nuclear power plants are on the coastline. The only power plants that they're starting in Japan are in the mountains. They're far, far away from where the tsunami was because the infrastructure wasn't destroyed completely. It was destroyed though because of the earthquakes. And the earthquakes shook that whole country. But you can imagine, there's a nuclear power plant here, a nuclear power plant there, along that 500 mile coastline. Most of them are on that coastline. And so they were inundated with salt water. Every one of them, up to 50 feet high. And there is no technology to salvage all this equipment because it starts rusting. Go down, wash your car in salt water, leave it there for a couple of days. Uh, like these places were, were immersed in salt water for weeks. Leave your, your car in salt water for a couple of weeks and then go down and take it for a drive. Not gonna start, is it? It's gonna be full of rust, isn't it? It's not gonna be good to anybody. No one's gonna buy it, are they? Well, that whole country was like that, see? And the enormity of it, it seems to be lost on everybody. The enormity of the power of it and just, the, the scope of this thing, 500 miles of coastline, eradicated. But the power plants are okay, Dana. They're like Superman. That's what they are. 
Uh-huh. Yeah, well, I don't believe you. I think you're lying, manipulating mass murderers. I mentioned no name. <laughs> Jay Colin, Ken Buesler. Let's keep going. Cause we're running. We're running now. We're gonna keep moving. We only got 15 minutes left. 15 minutes. Don't give us much time. We'll jump. So the models are very well known of the dispersals from all around the major institutions all around this planet. Now this model is based upon cesium-137. It's based upon, uh, right now it's looking at the 16th of March. 16th of March, 17th of March. Uh, this is six days later according to this model, but it's only using two elements. That's the 18th of March. Now it's hitting America and Canada. Now it's down to New Mexico or down to Florida. It's all the way into Alaska. Now, now it's really, you can see how it's moving. Now it's starting to circulate back there around. Now this is the same thing that a forest fire over there would do or automobile pollution over there would do. But except this one here, they're not including all the forest fire, the square, right there. They're just talking about the reactor, but they're not including all the reactors or all the releases or the continuous ongoing meltdowns or anything like that. It's just two elements. Actually, this one only says one. Cesium-137. So you can see by the... And so let's grab an... This one's replaying itself. And let's grab another model because we're, we're running out of time. And so let's play a clip from Japan's media talking about the releases from number two only. They're not including reactor one, reactor three, reactor four, or the spent fuel pools or their ongoing releases or their meltdowns or anything else. We're just talking about unit two. A new computer simulation shows how radioactivity is spread around the world. That simulation is based on the scenario in which contaminated air was vented from the disabled number two reactor building on March 14th, three days after the massive earthquake and tsunami. Computer images show the radioactive material was lifted 5,000 meters into the air. It was then carried by westerly winds and spread over the Pacific Ocean. The images indicate that on the fourth day after the being, being vented, the substances reached the west coast of the United States, and on the, on the seventh day, they approached Iceland after crossing the Atlantic. A new computer simulation... They reached Iceland after crossing what? The Atlantic? <laughs> what? Why, did, why didn't Jay Colin Ken Buesler tell me about that? How come they always talk about the ocean? How come they say it takes six years for anything to come across the ocean? Huh? That's a question you need to ask them. You need to get in their faces for lying to everybody and being up in all that media. We're going to cover a, a whole week on the nuclear apologists. It might take three weeks because i got so much on these people and there's so many of them lying to you and telling you that the jet streams are not real. I'm, all I'm trying tonight is to prove the jet streams are real. That's all I'm trying to do. I'm not trying to say blah, 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 blah. So total disposition from, this is day 79, day 80 or whatever. So here's a better idea. Go Poway, day 12, day 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, 22, 23, day 24, day 26. <laughs> no, Dana's not real. Jet streams are not real, Dana. Stop telling people that it's real, Dana. You're confusing everybody. If you're worrying them, Dana, they think the jet streams are real and they're gonna start worrying about something that's not real, Dana. The, the pollution can't come over here. Can it get over here, Dana? Jay Cullen and Ken Buesler are checking, Dana. Yeah, but they're not nuclear scientists, but they're checking. Yeah, well, I'm checking too. And what I find doesn't add up to what they find. What I find is from institutions all over this planet showing me the models. That Jay Cullen and Ken Buesler denies exist. How many models do you got to see? Here's NOAA. Here's your American government based over 40 days. Day on the second day of Fukushima. Fukushima bring to me. I had done 131 and cesium and 2,000 other elements on day 19. On March 19, 2011, Fukushima brought to me on March 23rd. 2011, Fukushima brought to me on March 25th, 2011, Fukushima. You kind of get the idea, I guess. But this is only based upon a release from, uh, this one is from Unit 1. The other one I showed you, the, the news clip was Unit 2. This is Unit 1 model. Doesn't include Unit 2, though. 
<laughs> are you on a tree? Are you on a 40? I'm going releases. Or there's been fuel pulls. Or any explosions. Or detonation. <laughs> oh, you have been lied to like you can't even imagine. No, it's okay, Dana. Shut up, Dana. Don't tell people about the jet streams, Dana. You're just going to worry them. No, we got to do things. We got to get busy. We got to come up with solutions. We got to come up with a way forward. We got to have a conversation. We can't ignore it. It's not going to go away. It's only going to get worse. If a terrorist done it, it wouldn't it'd be in the media constantly. Dr. Raymond Gilmady does all these studies. 1974. Uh, I'm just flashing through because he got 94. 1987, still killing the little doggies. Oh, suck it up, you little critters. Uh, 1988. 1988, plutonium induces chronic lung injuries. Oh, beagle dogs, Dana. Who cares about the beagle dog? I do. Third group of 10 dogs not exposed to 239 were matched for age and sex. Blah, 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 blah. Then they were sacrificed. You know, they cut their throats. I said they killed the dogs in those labs. They cut their throats. Okay, I made that up. I don't really do stuff like that. But that's how much I despise these people. I'm willing to but I'm not willing to keep that one alive because they probably stab him through the ear or something with nails and then they go have a smoke a crack up behind the building when they listen to the dog struggling. They kill dogs all day, every day for 35 years. I apologize for saying what I just said. I can't contain it sometimes. Effective aerosol chemical form. So the dogs were breeding the aerosol. They weren't getting 20 million liters in a, in a, in a liter of water. 20 million iodine in a liter of water. No, they're just getting a couple. Oh, Dana. Dana, why, why are you telling people about this, Dana? They're only doing that because... Uh, 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 uh. But see, 35 years killing dogs, they haven't figured out a way to save the dog. 35 years killing the dog, no matter how small the particle was, they know the dog is going to die. Oh, the dog is going to die. We're going to chop him up, make a whole bunch of money figuring it out. But we're not going to share that. Everybody that's trying to find out what the radiation does, we'll feed them fruit flies. <laughs> and i got to show them this stuff. Loveless. Right? L-A-C-E. But think about the word itself, you know, loveless. That's because that's what they are. they they got no love in them to kill dogs like this for the nuclear industry. And I, it's just, this is not the only spot. There's thousands of these laboratories right now killing cats and animals, humans. I mean, they'd done experiments on pregnant women, 800 of them, Stanford did, in a hospital, telling them it was vitamin drinks, <laughs> vitamin needles, it was plutonium, uraniums. Then they dug up the bodies after. But we're talking about aerosol, atomizing, let's keep going. Right, but I just want to make points sometimes, i got to make a point, right? Radioactive rain over the Pacific will save lives. Now, so what he was talking about was, was chemtrailing the skies, with adjuvants that would bind to the atoms, would aggregate the atoms, and then they would fall in the ocean and sink. What? That's all kind of talk, Dana. And so anyway, they wanted to spray the Pacific Ocean like they've done in Chernobyl to knock down the radiation, but they wouldn't do it, allegedly. But that's what they're doing with the chemtrails. Some of that chemtrail, that's what that's about. Because if they have a mass die-off on your coastline, from a, a full-on assault of this stuff, it's going to be game over for their pensions and their uh, little lifestyles and their little neighborhoods where they live into. There'll be no, no refuge in the near future for nuclear apologists, nuclear bloggers, pro-nuclear, nuclear scientists, nuclear academics, nuclear universities, the people that are getting checks or even pensions after retiring. That's all gone in the next year or so. Just like most of the species in the Pacific Ocean are now gone. Forecast maps of radioactive clouds show a threat to U.S. West Coast. Yeah, 20 million liters. 20 million atoms in a liter. Disintegrations, atomic decays. So if you got a liter, you leave it there, it'll do that till the end of time. 20 million decays. Now do you get it? And it rains all the time, right? It keeps bioaccumulating. So if it's in the ground, that's 20 million, another liter, 40 million, another liter. That's why a million a square meter is accurate in this context of there's at least that. But then another 20 million liter fell in that square meter, another 20 million fell in that square liter, in a liter. 
Rain doesn't just come by liters, okay? Leave a big bucket outdoors and see how long it takes to fill up over four or five days of rain. Okay, let's wind it down. 11.25, we got five minutes to go. Let's bang off a few more headlines. North America hit with very high levels from Fukushima plume. Radioactive material in the ocean in the west coast was 500 times more than expected. But Jay Cullen can't find it. Ken Busler can't find it. If they do find it, it's iodine or it's, it's a harmless old CCM. You got to put an end to them. You got to put an end to their lies is what I'm saying to you. You got to hold them accountable. You got to get in their face. You got to call the institutions they work for every day. Don't lose their number. Put it on the speed dial. You wake up in the morning, call them up and give them shit. Everybody, you had a million people calling them every day, you'll put a, you'll end this. Fukushima forecast radioactive particles because they won't have anywhere to hide and he won't be able to do anything only just sit in the corner free to answer the phone. That's how you get them, that's how you get back in their faces and that's what we do. Just me speaking freaks them out. Imagine a million people calling them up in a day or a week and that's coming. Oh yeah, baby, that's coming. Trust me. Radioactive particles concentrated over North West U.S. on April 6th. 20 million in a liter. That's not concentration data. No, that's normal data. Happens after every radioactive accident. Every nuclear accident. Radi <laughs> Radiation clouds to approach the U.S. West Coast starting April. It just never stopped coming. It only takes three days to get here. That's the Norwegian Institute for Your Research. That was another plume because it never stopped coming out of there even today. They just stopped producing these forecasts. Fukushima forecast shows large radiation cloud over the U.S. in Canada, North America. Uninterrupted line of radiation stretched 5,000 miles right across the Pacific Ocean because it didn't stop coming out of there. And it's not going to because we won't even try. We only send in the homeless who have nothing but accidents and are exterminated or liquefied, liquefactions, or liquidated, I should say, liquefaction, liquidated. Large radiation clouds. No, nah, it's okay, Dana. Shut up, Dana. Right near the surface. These are heavy elements. Does that mean they just fall out of the sky? Wow, they went up in an explosion, they fell back down. It doesn't work that way. It means they linger close to the ground. They just hover there. They're one ten thousand of a millionth. You know, they're one one millionth. Take about a meter. Now divide it into a million. A meter. Three feet. Divide it into a million. Now take one million and divide that into one ten thousand. One ten thousand. That's what you got of a millionth of a meter. That's how big these particles are. They just sit there. They hover right. Like like the dust in your house. And so you clean your house spotless. You got hardwood floors. You got a brand new house. Whatever. You clean the house spotless. Everything's shiny. Woo! And you got the doors open, the curtains open, and the sun is shining through, and you can see all this dust floating around. It's a thousand times smaller than that. And you can't clean that stuff up, can you? <coughs> Norwegian Institute for Your Research, they were just modeling it. Like all the models I showed you. Uh, so Fukushima Plume, March 19th, 2011. Fukushima nuclear plume covered most of North America and it's now over the North Atlantic, including the Caribbean and Canada East Coast. Right? And then it went on to Iceland, like I showed you that news clip. There you go. So I hope, now I, there's no way to cover everything that I got. You can't cover everything that I got there in that folder. It's just, you, there's not enough time in the day to even try and cover it. Uh, but these, these models are real. These dispositions, these radioactive fallouts, uh, this is the beginning what you're looking at. But then the whole atmosphere fills up with it. But it's invisible. You can't see it, but you can only see it because it's, it's modeled. But the models are not accurate. The models don't include all the materials, all the reactors, all the releases, the ongoing releases, the spent fuel pools, the detonations. It just covers releases for one reactor each of these none of these models are covering more than one reactor and none of them are covering the melted reactor none of them are covering the spent fuel pool detonation none of them are covering the 2000 isotopes and jay Collin will tell you and ken Busey will tell you it don't exist woods hole oceanographic institution is the pr firm behind these people so it's not really jay Collin wood and ken Busey 
per se. You need to dethrone these people immediately. They have to go. That's the bottom line there. But you got to dethrone Woods Hole. Woods Hole's got to go. You got to end Woods Hole. That's got to go. And you should burn it to the ground when it's finished. You got to get rid of all of these people. Their families have to turn their backs on them. They got to go. I mean, they're going to kill me in the near future. <laughs> Don't think they're not. It's the person somebody's going to have to pay, I guess. I don't care if you kill me. I'm not stopping. I'm not going away. I'm not giving up. I'll never give up. Even if there's a mass die-off right across the planet, I still won't be giving up. I don't know how to. Okay, we say goodnight to everybody. Uh, the show's officially over right now. Turn this racket off. Sorry, it gets a little bit loud sometimes when I'm clicking on things that are not quick enough. But at some point, we're going to get the new TriCaster. And that TriCaster is $12,000. And each one of these presentations will be fantastic. They're good now, don't get me wrong. There's nobody out there can touch what I'm doing for a presentation right now. There's nobody out there can comprehensively, that even has that data available to them that I've aggregated since I've been at this. And the fact that we spent 365 days um, in the last 365 days, we spent it on 260 on the ocean. And I'll just break that down a little bit for everybody. So unit uh, section two, hang on, nuclear proctologist. If you come over to my site, that's the front page today. There's sections uh, one is there and sections two is where I'm uploading all the most recent stuff. And that front page is the most recent stuff here of the coastline of Canada. If you scroll down, I don't have the headlines below this one. Oh, my mistake. I'll get it in after. We're starting to get back on track. We still got a long way to go for uploading all these pictures. I still got a few months of work uploading all the pictures. I'm getting back into it. What I found out uh, yesterday, when I started to get back on track here, Mr. Stream yesterday, was that I had these pages already created, but you've never seen them. And so the first five ones in section two, you haven't seen those pages. They were hit away. I didn't know that. And so I got them up yesterday for you. They're in section two. In the top right-hand corner of your page, click section two. And down below that is the most recent trips from the expedition. And so when you're going through those pages, you know, like uh, all of these pages down here, you'll find headlines at the bottom of it, a couple of hundred headlines at the bottom of the pages. But the page has got 200 pictures. And that's the coastline of Canada. We went out and showed you the species in, in low tide, the tidal zones, the nursery of the ocean. Very high quality pictures. Click on any picture. Give it a second to clean itself up because it's high resolution. It's cloud based. You can click left or right of the picture. And some, some pictures are going to be blurry. That day it was raining all day, so I'm hiding the camera. And so you're probably going to get some blurry pictures. Shouldn't be that many. And some, sometimes it was because it's raining out and everything is wet, and I'm just trying to get some documentation, but I posted everything so there could be no misinterpretation that I was trying to hide anything. Every picture gets posted, even if it's blurred. We, we don't, there's no need to have a conversation that, you know, Dana's hiding pictures, so I got to post everything because they're attacking me. If I, if I, if I got a blurry picture, I used to take it out and I get attacked for that picture saying, well, there was probably all kinds of life in that picture, you had to pull her out. They will do anything to smear me, and you'll find my name on the internet. You look up Dana Dernford, you'll find they got me smeared beyond imagination. But after watching this presentation, do you really think I'm a bad person? Do you really think I'm a lawyer? Do you think I need to make anything up? Do you need to think that, uh, you know, that I'm part of the nuclear industry try, trying to be the control opposition or something? No, I'm Dana Dernford, the nuclear proctologist. I hide away from nobody. I'm accountable to everybody. And on my pages, you'll find my telephone number and contacts, stuff like that. Um, I'm open to everybody. I'm independent. I don't answer only to the people on my site in the context of that's, you know, we're, I consider us a big family in every sense of that word that are doing the moral not and, and the important work that has to get done that they refuse to do. Nobody went out and searched the coastline, looked at the tidal pools, but that is the first spot that's going to get impacted. You can see how much is raining in that picture that day and I went through hell to get and I don't want to always talk about that and I don't but it's important I guess that people everybody understands what we went through and what other people sacrificed so that I can go through this and that together we created and, and made this happen 
and that we got that data, we got it, we've done it already. It's going up at the nuclear proctologist all the time. And I do, you know, it's 260 days on the ocean to 365. It's going to take me a few months to get used to being back home again. It's going to take me a while to get used to playing with all this equipment again and getting the pictures up all the time. And I don't even have a life anymore because I have to do this all the time in the hopes that this will be finished and I can have my life back. But that will never happen. I couldn't care less about it anymore. It's just that we got to have a debate. we got to find, i got to find other people having a lucid conversation before I can slow down. i got to find other people blogging this lucidly in proper context before I can slow down, before I can feel that there are other people out there that are finally able to pick up, you know, I'm filling that gap as it is now, but as more people show up, but, but just because they show up don't mean I'm going to give it up. I'm going to make sure that they're actually honest people and genuine people before I can feel that I can slow down a bit. But I, I got an incredible amount of work ahead of me to get done. Then I got to get out on tour with the documentary and push that into all the communities and we got to fund all of this. And so the idea is a book and a documentary to fund everything and then pay back everybody that ever donated on top of that. And so that the future of this organization, the nuclearproctologist.org, won't even need me in it. And even if I'm killed off, that organization should be able to sustain itself in the near future. That's the plan. Because I know they're coming after me. First, they demonize you everywhere and slander you everywhere, then they kill you. That's how the system works. They are demonizing me and slandering me everywhere. And so I'm assuming they're going to kill me soon. At this point, we have already conquered the entire coastline, have all that documentation. And I don't say this lightly, that what, this is what they're notorious for doing. This is how they operate. This is their rule book, is to kill the opposition, particularly people like me. Should never be out as far as I am right now. Should never got any traction. And they are hard at it with thousands of PR firms smearing me everywhere you go. And I don't hide nothing away. I share everything with you. These episodes are meant to inform everybody in past, present, and future that can find it. The role we're playing is the role that we were dealt. And that this was done on our watch. This was done on our watch. And as our obligation, as our, we are obligated on our Bill of Rights, our Constitutions, our Magna Carters to be the checks and balances. And that's all we're fulfilling. But it's a moral and ethical. We're talking about the death of the Pacific Ocean, that we documented it. That 600 algaes are missing off this coastline. And that the one you see there is the kelp weed. But there's 600 other kelps that they're missing. There's maybe a dozen to 24 species throughout the entire coastline when you added them all up. There's less than 100 species throughout the whole coastline of marine life in the tidal zones when there should be over 9,000 visible species. 6,500, 5,600 highly visible species. And like Barclay Sound would have another 1,800 species compared to out here. And we went through Barclay Sound and they only got 12 species at best. We are talking about an extinction event playing out. We are talking about all the birds are gone except for maybe 11, 11 species out of over 300 species of birds. We are talking about a complete failure, a complete, complete collapse of the herring, the sardines, the anchovies, the squid, the mackerel, the krill, the basis of the mammals food chain. But the basis of the, sea, the marine food chain is already gone. The phytoplankton, the pods, the, the oxygen of the water has been destroyed through the ongoing constant releases that are equated with bananas and potato chips to deceive you in the hopes that you can't work it out and that you are having, trying to have a conversation with somebody mentions it, you'll say, oh, well, I thought it was like a banana. I thought it was safe to drink. That's what they told me. Why would they lie? They're on TV. You're a fucking nobody. Excuse the language. But I've had that said to my face. And I, I'd be attacked in all the websites out there with that connotation, with those conjectures. I'm going to get mad here if I don't watch myself. Okay, we're going to say goodnight to everybody. No questions and answers today. I'm burnt out. It's Saturday. But we had to get this episode out there. You know, because in, in a few months we're going to have a documentary finish. I won't be able to do these episodes for a long time. I'll be out there pushing this. I got no idea how I'm going to do any of this. I had no idea how I'm going to raise the 12000 I had no idea how I was going to get on the ocean, but we done it. I had no idea how we were going to fund that, but we done it. 
We all had no idea how to do it, but we all pulled together and we done it. It's done. It's done. We done her. 260 days on the ocean. I can assure you, we are the authority. We are the authority on Fukushima. Bar nobody. Nobody can touch us. So you go to, to the nuclear uh, beautiful girl by Dana on YouTube to catch the live streams. Go to video. Click on video. Go to live streams. And when you get there, you'll find this one. And so every day at 10 a.m., five days a week, rather, I'm trying to do a live stream. I'm pretty good. I'm pretty reliable. You know, I'm just a single person, so I'm going to have my own issues sometimes. But generally, it's going to be, because this is so important, it's going to be five days a week at 10 a.m. Pacific Canada, British Columbia, Canada time. And so if you come to my site that morning uh, and you come to the live stream section, right, like I just showed you, go, go to there, click on videos, open up live streams, and you'll get this page. You'll see a live stream pending. That'll be the first one in that corner. These are the ones that are already live streamed recently, right? One day ago, two days ago, three days ago, four days ago, right? So you can see I'm pretty reliable. And we're only going to get better as I build up my energy. From, and, I, you know, it's going to take me another month to build up my energy. But does that mean I'm going to slow down? No. Wait till I actually get going. And so you need to catch these live streams. That's how you can do it. And you can always watch it later at Beautiful Girl by Dana. It'll show up. Lots of people are working, lots of people got a life, lots of people can't play because of their friends or their families, and lots of people are just different time zone, lots of people can't make the live stream, lots of people don't have the bandwidth. There's only two billion people connected on the planet, the rest don't. And so, if anybody was trying to comment, I didn't get it, because this is screwed up. Miss Milky, that's Jan Brooks, you'll find her links below my video, she never stops. And she has some really good stuff up there. Does she just post it? Some amazing stuff up on her site. You want to definitely want to be checking it out. And we can't say enough good things about Jan. She never stops. And there's so many people below me. I can't include everybody. Uh, but there's lots of people down below me. You can go to their site and see all the stuff they aggregated. It's going to be in... It's not very many people like me on this planet that are actually bloggers and that are bringing you the documentation as they blog. Um, let me bring that back up when we say goodnight. Good day, I should say, because it's Saturday. And like you say, just to get up and iron everything. I even iron my pants, but no one ever sees my pants. <coughs> but I, I'm like that. You know, you get a wash, you get a shower before I do a live stream, but nobody's going to smell me or, or, you know what I'm saying. <coughs> just in the hopes that'll make a difference. It always makes a difference for me anyway, but in the hopes that... You know, I'm always showing you that I do all the extra too. I'm always ironing my shirts. I go through the whole gamut of everything. I sit here and I agonize over what I can include and can't include because I'm limited to a certain amount of time. And then most people, oh, Dana, you know, it's over two minutes long. Nobody's going to watch it. No, but you can listen to the radio all day. You can listen to the TV in the background for 10 hours and not even go and watch what's on it. But you can listen to that blaring in the background all day long and recite that in elevators and taxis and at work. But you can't listen to a guy talking about the most important thing on the planet because you have some prejudice because he has an accent or because he's old or because he's not carried by mainstream media or something like that. And I get these messages and, and assaults all the time from people. Just morons, literally. But they don't understand. It's not their fault. They're probably genuinely nice people. But that's a knee-jerk reaction they have. Oh, it's real information. I don't want to watch that. I got to think about shit then. I got to have to do something then. You better do something. You better get your ass in gear. You better figure this out. You better get back in their faces. Yeah, take care, folks. Mickey, L.A., Daniel, Miss Melky again, of course. Uh, Chris, BK, Elaine's out there somewhere, I've seen. Sean, Amthurst, Candace, uh, Kate, you'll find her links below. Fan filtration doesn't stop. Bob, uh, oh, yeah, we've done pretty good. That little stream that time. Ricky, Sean Oliver, let me see. I'll just scoop back through the comment section, say hi to a couple people, just in case. Adam, yeah. <laughs> Adam's been doing it so long now he got me doing it Yarr. and Chuck and I'm not going to get to everybody so we'll just give it up 
once again, there's your stream, there's your information, there's your presentation, there's all the documentation right in a nice tight package. And I never miss, uh, mistaken or misrepresented anything in this entire video. I never took anything out of context. I certainly never gave it the context, the extra context it deserves. I don't know about that one because I can get pretty lucid when I get going. I can, I can, because I do this 24-7, 365 days a year, Fukushima. So that I can't make a mistake, because if I make a mistake, it gets chopped up, put in a folder, and then later it gets used to come out and try to make me look incompetent, or just to demonize me, or to ridic try to ridicule me, or try to embarrass me, or just try to sway people not to come and listen to me. And everybody that's new that never comments on my videos will get an email if they comment on my video from the PR firms trying to smear me. And at some point, we will get all of these people, trust me. We will catch up to all these people. There's no doubt about it. We're having all of these PR firms and all the lap dogs out there. We're going to get their name. We're going to get their emails. We're going to get their web habits. And we're going to connect these people to the industry in no uncertain terms. And we're going to expose them to their loved ones, their friends, their families, to their communities, and see how they like to shoe up in their butts. Hugs for everybody. Take care, everybody. And Terry Ann, Sylvia, and anybody else I didn't get tonight, hugs for you folks. We'll see you on Monday. Got a radio show this evening. Got another one tomorrow. Got another radio show Monday night, Jeff Rinses. And I think there's another radio show for Sunday. Somebody's trying to get hold of me now. I'll go check the email again. And we'll get through them all. Hugs for everybody. Take care, folks. Beautiful Girl by Dana, nuclear proctologist, October 17, 2015. Take care.